Uh, like always, I want to thank you guys for coming out and covering Penn State football. We appreciate it. We don't take it for granted. Uh, I want to thank all the Penn State fans that traveled. Uh, it was a really cool environment. And I thought, you know, obviously once we got going and started making some plays, you could feel our Penn State presence in the stadium, uh, which was awesome. Um, haven't been a part of too many games where you lose the turnover battle like that, like we did. It's something we take a lot of pride in and have done a really good job. Uh, so to get that type of win while turning the ball over the one, the Hail Mary, I don't really count that one, uh, but the other ones, you know, were significant. But we did win the explosive play battle. Uh, we won the third down battle, which I would not have thought that until I saw the stats. We won the sack battle, although it was not, uh, it wasn't a, a ton of that action for either sides. Uh, we lost the starting field position battle, which obviously was the turnovers. Penalty battle the last two weeks, you guys were on me about that, fair enough. But we have been better the last two weeks, and I'm proud of our kids showing discipline and the coaches making those corrections. And then I thought the middle eight was big. They took the ball. Uh, we got the ball in the second half. We had 10 points to their three points. And back to the turnovers, although we had three turnovers, they were only able to get six points off of those turnovers. So that was big. Um, obviously, a big story of the game is Tyler Warren, 17 catches for 224 yards, a school record for tight ends and the second most yards ever for a Penn State football player. Uh, that doesn't even count what he's doing in the running game. He's got a pass, what he's doing blocking. I've been talking about him being the best tight end in college football, but the reality is he's now part of a conversation of one of the best players in all of college football. Um, great story, Ryan Barker. Um, you know, walks on at Penn State, um, and you know, opportunity knocks and he's ready. And to me, that's what our country is about. That's what the game of football, I think, teaches. He earned the starting job, then lost the starting job, then comes here. He's four for four on the road, uh, game-winning field goal there in overtime. Ryan, uh, cold as ice Barker is what I'm calling him. So I'm just, I'm really proud of him. Just how the whole game went, you know, the offense, you know, started out a little slow. The defense really did a good job then, then, uh, the offense started going, and the defense needed the offense to have their back. And then special teams, I thought number one, you know, we went into this game with a ton of respect for him. We always take a certain player or a certain scheme, and we say, this guy can't be a factor in the game. All-American returner and impactful at wide receiver. And I thought we did a good job in terms of punt location, kick location, and coverage. So that was big. Um, I'm just proud of our kids. We found a way to get a tough win on the road. Uh, this is going to make the bye week awesome because it would not have been awesome without this. So um, just proud of our guys. And, again, appreciate the fans and the support that we got. Um, and we're going to need to spend this bye week getting better. There's still a ton of stuff that we can get better. But we're 1-0, and and that equals 6-0. and And uh, I'm going to take it and run to the airport. Do you guys ever see the movie Soul Plane? Probably, yeah, this group, probably not. Not a whole lot of reactions. Yeah, take, take a peek at it. Soul Plane, that's what it'll be like on the ride home. No reaction from this group, so obviously no. Yeah, you know, what I probably love the most about Drew, and it was probably reflective of our whole team, is it didn't go perfect for him today. And he just grinded through it and he pushed through it. Um, and he flushed the bad plays and moved on. And that's what you got to do in college football. It's not going to go perfect. They got talented guys. They got scholarship guys. They got a ton of NIL. And our guys just battled through it. They battled through it. I think Drew's a great example of that. I don't know what his final stats were, but... Um, I also want to give I also want to give Julian Fleming, you know, his flowers too because you talk about I think it was two huge fourth down plays, two huge fourth down plays. So, um, you know that 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 was big for us. But I think Drew was just a really good example of what I think our team did all day long. 
is just kind of kept battling and overcoming adversity. Coach, I want to ask you about cold as ice, as you call them now. I mean, as they missed their kick, you get into overtime. What is the process? Are you thinking with Ryan as far as the offensive calls? What do you want to do with that possession in overtime to give him a chance? And do you have any communication with him at all during the game, or do you stay away from him? Yeah, so uh, a couple things. We, we were going to run the ball um, in that situation. You never know. You split one and score a touchdown. That's what you prefer to do, but also – want to be borderline conservative as well because you're already in field goal range and you don't want to do anything that's going to take you out of field goal range. So I thought that was managed really well and Stig was standing next to me on the sideline and said, listen, if at all possible, prefer the ball either middle or, or to the left. And we were able to call a play to get us back into that sweet spot. Then they tried to ice him um, and he just went out and hit it. And he's kind of like this all the time. Like, like Literally, he's, he's been like that, just steady Eddie, doesn't get too high, don't get too low. Uh, he really was like this as a freshman as well. And um, I think according to our people, I think that's the worst, the first walk-off field goal win we've had since Dublin, Ireland, my first game, which was, was also pretty cool. So um, it was great having Tig with us on the sideline, came down for the game. The brotherhood that we have here at Penn State is special. I love that those guys want to be back with us and be around whenever they have time. That's cool, too. So a um, lot of cool things and a lot of things to be proud of. And I hope all the people back at home are proud of us uh, and, the, and the Letterman are proud of us as well, because I know I am. Johnny and Brennan. James, you mentioned Drew, you know, bouncing with a couple of significant turnovers, but bouncing back the way he did specifically that drive, the engineering that drive, 75 yards, nine plays, a couple of fourth down conversions. What does it say about him to be able to bounce back and, yeah, the first thing I'd like to say, and I'm going to answer your question, though, is our defense, again, after those turnovers, only giving up six points. That was huge. That was huge because if they don't do that, then it's hard to it's hard to have that ending that we just had. But, yeah, Drew just – he's just growing up. I think, you know, based on kind of how he was recruited and then when he shows up and the expectations are through the roof, right – um, and then last year, you know, he's a first-time starter in the Big Ten. And I think he was like, what was his touchdown to interception ratio? A lot to a little. And, like, people were still critical, right? I, and I get it. You know, Penn State, we got really, really high expectations. Um, and he's just gotten better. And he's gotten better in really every single area. And one of the big reasons he's gotten better, though, is guys are making plays for him. The wide receivers are making plays this year in a way they didn't last year. The tight ends are as well. Um, we weren't able to get the running game going today the way we had hoped. Um, I got a ton of respect for their defensive coordinator, who's a Penn State guy. Um, I got a ton of respect for their staff. You know, that's a talented team, and that's a talented staff. And then coming on the road and finding a way to get a win was big for us, and, and obviously Drew was a huge part of that. Yeah, I think you're going to have to find different ways throughout a season to win. Um, some are going to be blowouts. Hopefully more of them are blowouts. Um, but some of them are going to be comebacks. Uh, some are going to be home when you got the fans, you know, there supporting you. Some are going to be on the road where, where things are going against you and you don't have a whole lot of support in the stadium or it may be weather or whatever it may be. Um, that's big. And I think the word resilient was probably the best word to define our team today. And, you know, it's, it's good to be able to go in and say, hey, guys, we're a second-half team. But I, I, I prefer not to say that anymore. I prefer to be a four-quarter team, a start-fast team, a fourth-quarter team, all of it. Um, and we're going to have to be to continue to win the games that we want to win moving forward. Mike Gross and Flanders. Hi, James. Um, hey, Mike. How are you doing? Good. Got to get some explosive plays, and we're going to. Did you see stuff available? Did you see it coming? Well, I just think with the type of players that we have, and the scheme that we have, and and what we worked on all week, you know, that's I think you guys know that's that's kind of what I do during the game is on defense and during offense is not only manage the game, four downs, timeouts, those types of things, 
when to kick a field goal, when to go for it on fourth down. But it's also reminders to Tom and Andy when I can, hey, you know, next opportunity we get, let's take a shot. Um, you know, let's make them earn it right here on this third and long. Let's not go after them. Let's prepare. If I'm not, if I'm going against us right now as the offense coordinator, I'm calling a screen or running the ball to set up a set up a fourth down that they can go for because they're out of field goal range, whatever it may be. So, just reminding those guys from time to time um, on things that I think could be helpful, uh, and and sometimes it, sometimes it works. Uh, we'll go with Flounders, and then last question to play. Hey James. Buddy. You mentioned the defense kind of, uh, they took their lumps at times, but they also made some plays. Um, how challenging the balance of the USC offense with Marks, who I thought was, was, was pretty good to, to go with that pass game. And then the, the defense, the last two possessions, one to get the game into overtime with what Jalen did, and then the corners and deny kind of shutting the door a little bit on, uh, on USC and overtime. What yeah, I, yeah, I just I think that's a talented offense and play caller. Let, let's be honest. Um, and it's been that way for a long time. And our defense to step up and make plays as the game went on, they were doing a ton of check with me, motion in the back out to see if we were in man coverage or zone coverage, and then calling great man beaters and things like that. So being able to disguise – when they look back, us look back and changing some coverages and changing some calls. I thought we did a better job of that as the game went on. But then at the end of the day, you know, players got to make plays. And I thought our guys did that when it mattered most down the stretch. So, um, you know, it was pretty cool. See a guy like Jay Reed who always busts my chops for being emotional. Jay Reed's a tough dude from Detroit, Michigan. And to see him after the game um, – how much it meant to him was really, really cool. So I'm just, I'm just happy for our guys and our defense stood up when, they, when we needed it most. Last question, Andy Coach, two quick things. Uh, one, that little boy on Wednesday who was supposed to be in school at the uh, quarterback's club, that was my nephew. He made his entire month. Awesome. Uh, second of all, we talked about football winning his final earlier this year. What's that locker room like right now? Yeah, you know, in some ways – it was really cool, but the visiting locker rooms make it hard because they're so small and there's no space. Like most home locker rooms, you got space where you can enjoy it all together. And the visiting locker rooms are broke up and divided and small, so it's, it's, it's hard. It's not, it's not the same. But as you can imagine, uh, it, was, it was awesome in there. And, and to me, that's what it's all about for me at this point in my career. I just want to see the players uh, achieving their dreams and, and having fun and being rewarded for all their hard work and the same thing with the staff. So that's, that's what it's all about for me at this point in my career. I want to see them achieve their dreams and goals. So really, really cool for me. Uh, it's going to make for a great ride home. It's going to make, great, uh, make for a great bye week. And, you know, there's a ton of things that I think we're going to be able to learn from this game and we need to learn from this game. Because we're far from perfect, but we're also 6-0 and and 1-0 and this week, and uh, we're going to take it and run. So thank you. Appreciate you guys.